Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I've been doing research lately and I've come to realize that this specific prophecy that most Muslims are familiar with is actually extremely underrated. I'm sure many of you are aware of chapter 30 of the Quran. The Romans have been defeated in the nearest land and after their defeat then will triumph in a few years. Now many Muslims are aware that the Romans were at war with the Persians during the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. But we aren't aware of the details which is why many of us don't appreciate this as much as we should. Because what many people think is, hey, these are the two biggest empires at the time. You have a 50-50 chance of guessing who would be victorious. Fair enough, but that's only if you don't know any of the details. Heraclius, who was in Carthage, came into power when he was sent by his father, a general, to eliminate the emperor Phocas. Apparently, Phocas wasn't too popular because he overthrew Emperor Maurice before him. Unfortunately for Heraclius, he didn't have full control over the legions since some were loyal to Phocas. Khusro, the emperor of Persia, made use of the situation by going to war with the Romans. After the first year of Heraclius' rule, Theophanes states the following. In May, the Persians campaigned against Syria, took Epimea, and Edessa and advanced as far as Antioch. The Romans met them, fought and were beaten. The whole Roman army was destroyed so that very few men got away. In the next year, the Persians conquered Caesarea and a couple of years later, they captured Damascus. Theophanes states, the Emperor Heraclius sent envoys to Husro to stop the merciless bloodshed, set the payment of tribute and obtained treaties but Khusro sent the ambassadors away unsuccessful. In the next year, the Persians took Jordan and Palestine. Heraclius, realizing that they did not have much of a chance, sent a written dispatch that included the following, as we find in the Chronicle of Pascal. We beg too of your clemency to consider Heraclius, our most pious emperor, as a true son, one who is eager to perform the service of your serenity in all things. After the death of the usurper, our emperor wished to take his relatives and to return to his father in Africa after urging us to elect the man we wanted as emperor. In other words, Heraclius is saying, I didn't even want to be emperor. Please leave me alone. If I could, I would have simply went back to Africa. And do you know how Khusro replied? Well, in the very next year, he pretty much captured all of Africa, except for Carthage. He captured Carthage in the year after that. Oh, and by the way, I was just referring to the Persian attacks. They weren't the only ones picking off the Roman territory. Theophanes writes about the end of the decade. In this year, the Avars attacked Thrace. For those that aren't aware, the Pannonian Avars were pretty much considered nomadic barbarians that settled in East Europe. So how did Heraclius deal with this other threat? Theophanes continues by saying, Heraclius sent envoys to them to ask for peace, and when the Kagan agreed to this, the emperor went outside the long walls with the entire imperial bodyguard. He promised the Kagan many great gifts and got pledges from him that they would make peace with each other. But the barbarian set aside his agreements and oaths suddenly and treacherously advancing against the emperor. Heraclius was thunderstruck at this unexpected affair and fled to the city. The barbarian captured the imperial great and bodyguard and whatever else he could reach, then withdrew, plundering many villages in Thrace. According to Nicophorus, Heraclius, out of desperation for peace, gave the Avars 200,000 and his son as a hostage. John was the son of a concubine, but he was Heraclius' son nonetheless. Anyhow, in the year 621, the verses were revealed. The Romans have been defeated in the nearest land, and after their defeat, then will triumph in a few years. I would like you to keep in mind that this prophecy was made at the time in which things were looking up for Muslims. The boycott against the Prophet, peace be upon him, had ended. The people in Medina started to accept Islam. After a decade of preaching Islam and gaining the hearts of the people, the Prophet, peace be upon him, risked everything by making this prophecy. The chapter was recited publicly as the Quran is a living text and the disbelievers listen closely, even placing bets against the Muslims that the Romans would not attain victory within that time frame. 
things weren't getting much better in the following years. In fact, in the year 626, Constantinople was besieged by both the Avars and the Persians under the general Shahrbaraz. The Avars army alone was around 80,000 men. However, the Romans were able to survive the siege. A year and a half later, Heraclius was able to strike a deal with the Persian general Shahrbaraz right into Mesopotamia, destroy the palaces and conquer. Siroi, Khusro's eldest son, betrays his father, executes him, and then makes peace with the Byzantines out of desperation. Heraclius returns to Constantinople. Shahrbaraz vacates Syria, and the war is over in the year 628. In seven years, the prophecy comes to pass, and the Romans, who seem to have no hope of winning, turn things around miraculously and win the war. Niyar bin Mukram al-Aslami comments that when this occurred, many people embraced Islam. In regards to the time of this prophecy, Niyar states that this prophecy comes to pass seven years after it was initially revealed, came to pass in Hudaybiyah. Seven years is supported by Ubaidullah ibn Abdullah ibn Utbah. Qatada also affirms that this occurs at Hudaybiyah. Other companions like Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Abbas also testify in separate reports that this prophecy came to pass. Before ending this video, I'd like you to ponder upon a few things. There are some key things about this prophecy that you need to be aware of. This is a very, very unlikely prophecy. Edward Gibbon, the author of The History of the Decline and the Fall of the Roman Empire, comments, At the time when this prophecy is said to have been delivered, no prophecy could have been more distant from its accomplishment. Since the first 12 years of Heraclius announced the approaching dissolution of the empire, it revolved around matters that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had no control over. Of course, the verse states that it is he, Allah, that gives victory. He gives victory to whomever he wills, for he is the Almighty, most merciful. Finally, the prophecy had an expiration date. False prophets always avoid doing such a thing because if you go wrong, you fail the prophecy, that's pretty much it for you. It's pretty bad for business, which is why false prophets only make prophecies that are only supposed to occur after they have passed away. In other words, the Prophet, peace be upon him, completely jeopardized his mission by reciting these verses. And if it didn't come to pass, then it would have been the end of Islam. The outcome of the war was the least likely. What everyone was expecting was the Persians to defeat the Romans completely. Another possibility is the Persians are unable to expand their territory, which still, I mean, ends up with them winning the war. Another possibility is that Romans fight back and a stalemate occurs. The least likely scenario is a one in which the Romans attain victory and two, that they do so in this limited time frame. To reiterate, this is a prophecy that simply cannot be dismissed. If you're not a Muslim and you're watching this, I seriously want you to consider this information that you've received today. And for more prophecies, check out my series on the proofs of prophethood as well. For the rest of you guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.